we got a little drunk the night before. He had one too many tequilas I, I gave him. He was cross-eyed. Like, he was just not in no shape of, way, shape, or form to play golf. And we should have beat them. This guy literally lost us the game. <laughs> he was, I've never seen him get so upset with himself. Like, it was the first time I've ever seen him. Like, I was just like, dude, like, you're literally, you're sweating Don Julio. Like, just, there's a reason why you're not playing well, bro. It was the only time I've seen him. Like, the, the whole mental athlete mentality went to, went to Gaga. Like, it was just like. Welcome back to 4Ball. I'm Travis Miller, joined by my lovely co-host Annabelle Angel. Today we have a great guest, star actor J.R. Ramirez from the hit shows Manifest and Power. J.R., what's going on, man? What's up, guys? Well, thank you so much for joining us. For the people watching and listening who haven't seen Manifest or Power, maybe let's do Manifest. I feel like this is the, the biggest. The late, latest one, yeah. The yeah. biggest and latest. Can you give us a brief overview of, of the show and your character? Yeah. Um, well, we've been done now for a year and a half, so hopefully I don't ruin this. Uh, yeah, it feels like it was centuries ago. Um, Manifest is about a plane that goes missing. There's a couple, a uh, family that goes on vacation, and they go to get back on a flight, and the family gets separated. And when half the family arrives, they were told that they've been missing and presumed dead for the last five and a half years. So it's a story about, it's this beautiful story about family and what it is to walk into the most unimaginable circumstances that you can imagine, you know, you come back to a life that looks exactly the same, but everyone has mourned your death and moved on in so many ways because they thought you were dead for five and a half years, a long time. So it's about the story of, it's a story about families, a story about redemption, it's a story about love, it's a story about um, people start getting callings and stuff, the, the supernatural aspect starts happening, which I think they did a really nice job of kind of like playing the line of religion without too much without going too much into a certain area. So it kind of, yeah, it just, it hit the norm. It, it, it hit, it hit for everybody, you know, all ages and sizes and colors and everyone just fell in love with it, man. And we were, it was a great experience. And your character on the show? I played a character named Jared. I was not on the plane. Uh, I was a, uh, a cop uh, who was in love and had just proposed to one, to one of the main characters who was on the plane. Um, and as you do on any normal, lovely, broadcast television show. I mourned her death by marrying her best friend after five and a half years. Um, so he was not very liked for a very long time. Um, but, uh, absolute yeah. doghouse, straight yeah. to it. Yeah. <laughs> it started really not good for him. So yeah, he had to pick up those pieces as the show started. So with Manifest, when uh, it got canceled, put on pause there for a minute, and the demand from fans was so strong that it came back through Netflix and uh, I mean, what was that experience like, just hearing from all the fans of what they wanted? They, there were some unanswered questions in the show that left people unfulfilled, and there was so much fanhood for it. And with the Netflix demand, I mean, you guys were able to shoot that final season. Walk us through that experience. Yeah, it was pretty crazy, man, not going to lie. Um, it's something that, you know, being in the business now for, I'm not going to age myself, for over 15 years, uh, it's unimaginable. It really doesn't happen a lot. Um, so to be able to get canceled, we kind of felt it happening. Broadcast television is, is a different beast within itself. I kind of felt around the third season, it was kind of like, you know, there was a lot of politics behind it all. So I kind of felt like this was going to be the end. Um, but yeah, it was, un, um, it was unimaginable to just see what was happening. The next two months, we all kind of, as you do, you need to get a job. So we all were kind of back on you know back on the table trying to find a new job and like our bosses from that show were saying like we can't really tell you to to hold off but like things are happening behind the scenes and we're like you know, we're not getting paid for that so we're like yeah. we had one a co-star ended up getting a new job i was offered a few jobs and i was just like so we had to hold off as we're seeing this thing kind of unfold in front of us the fans just what really happened was that you know nbc we we're a warner brothers show that was sold to nbc NBC had the rights um, even after they canceled us, so they sold the first two seasons to Netflix, um, and right away it just became number one for like 50 weeks or something. Like, like all over the world. All over the world, and we're like, what does this mean? Because we're unemployed at this point, so what? I mean, this is great, but like we need to get another job, and that's when like we realized that something was happening behind the scenes, and yeah, it was on. It was just crazy, man. We we literally, I always say it. It's like it's because of you guys, it was because of fans that literally gave us the opportunity, more than anything, gave our boss the opportunity uh, to finish the story. And he had been holding on to this for like over 10 years since the whole Malaysia thing happened. 
this was his baby, and this guy was just one of the most um, unimaginable, like m one of the most collaborative, oh, uh, warm, amazing bosses I probably will ever have in this in this career. So to see him be able, this was his baby, to see him be able to get the chance to finish the story on a platform like Netflix, which is it is what it is today. It's unbelievable. The whole it just gets you know, eyes from the entire world, you know. I mean, just looking at the stats with Manifest, the, the minutes viewed and all, just in the billions, it's just crazy. Dude, it was awesome, man. It was such a cool experience. We were so fortunate. But yeah, it was because of the fans all around the world, you know. They've literally taken the show, you know, and, and, and yeah, we were, we were able to finish the story because of them, so. Being into acting for 15 years, I mean, walk us through getting started into that profession. I mean, everyone's kind of heard of, like, the Hollywood dream and, and going yeah. out to L.A. Like, what was the start for you? And Yeah, I, uh, I don't have any crazy, you know, cool story about, you know, family and the arts. My whole family's in the medical field. Mom wanted me, my parents wanted me to be a surgeon. Um, I tried pre-med. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'd even go for, like, a month before I was just like, this is not for me. Uh, but weak stomach or just not the just, classes? Or? Yeah, just, like, I couldn't deal with the fact of, like, Blood for me already, like the whole surgery thing, I was just like, there's no way in hell I'm going to be a surgeon. Uh, and that's what my parents wanted me to do. Um, so I thought it might be pediatrics or like, yeah, I don't know, something like that. And I was just like, there's no way I can be in school for this long. Um, so I ended up uh, going to business. I got my real estate license. I started, fell into, I moved to Miami after Tampa. I fell into the modeling world. Won't even get into that story, how that happened. But uh, that got me into commercial work. That got me into, I was always been fascinated by just the, the human brain and how it works and the power, the, the power that we have in, in this incredible instrument that we have up there. So I started, you know, really studying psychology and just fell into theater, just put myself into it and, and caught the bug right away at an early age. Early age, I was 20, 23. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I've always been very driven uh, when I'm become passionate about something, hence golf. Um, and uh, I literally studied for six months in Miami and realized that there was not really anywhere to go if I wanted to stay there. So I moved to, I moved to LA without a lot of money. I think I had like a thousand dollars in my pocket. I had a friend that lived in Malibu. I didn't know anybody. I was like, here we go, you know, and just put myself in every possible acting class you can think of, worked in every single possible job you can think of and just, you know, started the grind. So there was no, you know, there's, it wasn't, it's, it's, it's been quite a, Nothing's been handy to me on a silver platter, thank goodness, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I've definitely, you know, I've been through it all out there. So, yeah, it's been very, I've been very fortunate now in the last, like, 13 years. I've been, you know, working nonstop. It's been, you know. Yeah, not, I mean, you hear that move to Hollywood and just work your, your butt off to try to find an opportunity, but it's like, I'm sure it just doesn't amount to much for a lot of people, so. Yeah, I mean, there's no, that's the thing about the business. There's no, there's no, like, you know, book on how to, do you do A, you study, you do A, B to get C. Like there's no, like you can, you know, there's a lot of luck that comes in involved. You gotta be, you know, I think luck is obviously gonna be, it's, it's, it's being at the right place at the right time and being ready to go, you know, being prepared to, you know, I, I've had some opportunities in the beginning where I was just like, if I, I felt like I was like, if I would have booked that massive job, would I have been ready? You know what I mean? Like you never really know. So like, yeah, I, I always tell everybody, I was like, do everything you could possibly do, you know, work-wise, you know, like get into every class we can possibly get into. Like I, I did improv. Now I'd love to do some comedy in the future. I've done a couple little small things. I did a comedy movie for Paramount. Um, that saw a little bit of a, a small theater release, but like I was glad I did a lot of improv back then. Like do everything you could possibly do and put it in your tool belt because you never know when you're going to yeah. need it, you know what I mean? So. Kind of like golf, you gotta have yeah. lot different aspects of your game, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, do you think there are any transferable skills between acting and golfing? Oh Lord, my girlfriend's gonna hate me for this because I'll come home every day being like, this is, I mean, it's so relatable. It's literally so relatable. Like, I, like it, it's such a mind game and it's the same thing. It's a hundred percent. There's so much correlation to um, what you do in the work, uh, in the art space to the game of golf. I think it's, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still, I, I fight through it all the time because I'm, I beat myself out in the course, you know what I mean? Trying to like, I think so much over the ball. I'm also taking lessons and like kind of self-taught and now I'm like, you know, I have all these lessons in my head now. So like the more, and it's just like the work, you go in there with your lines in your head, good luck. Like, you know, because acting is about reacting. So if I'm not present and looking at you and reacting to, I don't know how you're going to deliver the line to me. So like the more present I am, you know, in the moment, the easier it is for me to react to you. Same thing standing over a ball. The more I'm sitting there thinking about it, 
nine times out of ten, I'm gonna duff that damn ball. You know, it's just like you just gotta let you gotta let, you, once you stand over, you gotta let it go and just hit the ball. You know, so it's just like, yeah, there's so many correlations. I could sit here and talk for hours about like the the similarities of it. You know, it's just um, 18 holes of improv. Mm, pretty much, yeah. I've practically almost lost my relationship because of it, but yeah. It is. <laughs> Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you got started in golf. Why did you pick it as a sport? Um, I, I, w I always say I wish I would have put a club in my hands. Uh, we actually, it's funny enough, I went to a high school that we were like state and we had an incredible golf team. And I remember I talked about it with my cousin and everybody. I remember us I was like at like 16 years old and being like, who the heck plays golf? Like, I don't want to like, no, I'm not playing golf. And I'm like, that was the dumbest, probably the dumbest thing I ever did in my life. Like, I wish I would have started young. You know? no, I was the same way. I used to make fun of the guys on the golf team in high school. I'm like, why don't you play baseball? Like, that's where it's yeah, at, guys. Come on. Sport, you know? like, yeah, now I wish I had that swing built in when I was a younger age, uh, for sure. Dumbest thing I ever did. But now, yeah, I just, I just kind of, like, you know, picked it up, like, with the boys in college, um, leisurely. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I'd say 10 years. It's probably a little bit longer than that. But I've become – it's an obsession. It's become, an, like, a full obsession. I mean, honestly – I played a lot of basketball growing up, and um, after doing a, a pretty big job in New York uh, that I did out there, I remember going out. We had a lot of, um, it was a really big cast, and a lot of them were big basketball players. I remember going out and playing throughout the season of shooting and getting, like, pretty much, like, yelled at that if we got hurt, we're liable for, like, a lot of money because the studios are putting all this money on you, and if you were to get hurt, you can't show up to work. And I, it started clicking with me of being like, you know, because I've torn my ACL. Basketball is the kind of game where, like, I love so much, but, like, I can't really do anything half ass, you know? So, like, I go full out, and, like, you just, you can get hurt out there, you know? So, like, and I've been, again, blessed enough to, you know, I've had three really big jobs back to back. So, like, I've kind of toned down the basketball and, like, focused more on the, you know, the golf is, is I don't know, I've put more energy into golf as, like, the last 10 years, so... Did you yeah. have much time to play golf whilst you were filming? No, no, that's no. It was, uh, I was in New York the whole time, and they loved, for some reason or another, they loved to put us uh, through. Uh, we would start in August and we would end in, in eight, March, April. They love to shoot during the winters over there, so there's not a lot of golf that happens. Believe me, I have tried, and I feel like my number is anything under like 50 degrees. It's just not worth it. Fair weather golfer. Right? I've tried like, well, yeah, the, the whole like bundle up, certain, certain clothes, the, the rain gloves, the winter gloves. Like, it's just like your fingers after like three holes. It's just like, yeah, it's tough to play out there in the condition. So, yeah, I, I spend normally four months out of the year uh, where I wasn't working, where I was like, I'd shoot to California or Florida and hit, play some golf and be like, I don't understand why I can't get my handicap down. It's just like <laughs> playing four months out of the year. It's just like, that's not going to do it. I think... Samuel L. Jackson writes in his contracts he must spend, I think, two days per week playing golf. I haven't quite gotten there yet, but that's good to know <laughs> that, like, I've had certain things. I'm like, I'm going to ask for this in the future. That's, you know, I'm, I'm, that, may just, towards it. <laughs> that may just take the number one yeah, spot. I'm your, not going to lie. What are your goals or aspirations in your acting career in the future? Well, number one yeah. is to add have to play golf in my contract <laughs> fly me to pebble once a week yeah you've made it yeah and you're paying for it yeah. <laughs> i love it so you had the opportunity to play in one of our prom events here at live walk us through that experience and, and who did you play with oh man for, oh i uh i didn't get much sleep i'm not gonna lie the night before i have not have been that nervous in a very long time uh, you were nervous to, oh my i was so nervous and my girlfriend, even even getting to the hotel, she was just like, what is, I've never, you know, we've worked with a lot of talented, and I've been blessed to work with a lot of talented actors, people that I've even looked up to. I'm like, you know, I, was, I walk in and like, you know, it's something that I feel very comfortable, like, you know, even if there is nerves, it's something I just, I think, I don't know, it's different. Yeah, I, like, I've been so giddy the entire, tw like, 36 hours I've been here. It was just like, just to be able to be around these people. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just it was such a cool experience, man. Like from from beginning to end, the I played with Taylor Gooch and I played with Lee Westwood yesterday, um, and it was just the collaborativeness of it. You know, the music, the f like they just they were literally giving us lessons the entire time. Like just sitting there, like like interacting with us and playing uh, betting games, and like it was just it was a dream come true. That's you awesome. know, I mean, the first hole was a little rough because I couldn't even chip, which is normally my strongest suit. Like I duffed a chip, which I don't think I've duffed a chip in a while. I was just like, my, my hands just couldn't like, 
I was so nervous, but then I, I picked it up, played pretty well, and um, yeah, we had a great group with us, so it was so much fun. Yeah, the, and the music on the course is definitely a, you know, a new thing, and it's one of the, the staples of live, just golf it louder, and it's just, a, it's just a fun, vibrant experience. Do you play music out on the course generally when you're just All the time, buddies? all yeah. the time. Yeah. Problem is that I've been in Florida for quite a while, and if they play another damn Morgan Wallen song, I'm gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> No, my boys are all obsessed with the Morgan Waller, man. I'm just like, enough, man. I like the Morgan guy, but like, it's just like, everyone's obsessed with this guy over there. You can definitely wear out a song. Pretty He's quickly. been worn out in my book, yeah. I try to throw a little reggae out there or something just to mix it up, and it's just Morgan all the time. No, no, no. Yeah, music is a big, it's, it's huge, I find. Um, and I've done a couple of PGA events, uh, pro-ams, and I've never done live one. This is my first one. And like, there's just such a chill, cool aspect to the whole thing. It just feels light and fun, and like you can go out there and have a good time. It feels like you're going and playing with the boys, you know. Yeah. But you just, you know, you're, you're having, you know, Joaquin, average, you know, 340. Like he's 150 <laughs> pounds wet. This guy's just hitting like, a, you know, 340 yards. Like it's unbelievable. Right? Golf's already humbling enough, and then you see these guys hit the ball that are like half your size, They're twice as far as you. Like it looks effortless. They're unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Taylor is nasty out there, man. We had such a good time. What kind of tips were uh, Taylor and Lee giving you guys? Um, yeah, Taylor actually just told me, because my, my problem, unfortunately, which was why I feel like I have a really hard time breaking 70, I've only done it twice in my life, um, is my driver. I think you saw that yesterday. <laughs> I have a really hard time controlling that fun little stick. I've thought about breaking it 35 times. Um, and he just told me, he's like, because you know, I'm working on trying to work on a draw. I naturally fade the ball. And he's like, dude, stop. Like, I mean. I've seen you try to work this draw and you duck hook five times. Like, he's like, give me a fade. Let me see what that looks like. I'm like, oh, the fade. Because uh, normally my fade sometimes I slice it. I pipe one down the middle. He's like, try that again. You know, he's like, he's just told me about face control. He's like, just really focus on, on controlling the face through impact. Because like, that's literally, you can, you can have a thousand les lessons or whatever, but that face is what matters, which is true. You know, he's like, your path is good. You're athletic. I can see your hands get to where they need to get to. Just focus on trying to get that, that club square which is obviously anyone who plays golf is easier said than done because sure. sometimes we feel like it's square and it's not, you know, and it's also, like, it's, it's such a tough game. One degree open, one degree closed is just like disaster. These guys were spoiled though. They were getting tips. Uh, Boyd Summerhays was hanging around them. Boyd, awesome. Yeah, giving tips. I was awesome. like, yeah, like yeah. you're going to get in, an invoice after this. For yeah, pretty lessons. much, getting... pretty much. <laughs> yeah. What would you say the strengths of your game are? Um, you know what, my, my short game has gotten really, really strong, man. My irons are probably my strongest suit. Um, I'm, I'm a very good iron player. I've been playing my irons very, very well lately. Um, my par threes are, are like, par threes are normally my thing, but I was a terrible putter. Um, and I'm very hard on myself in everything I do. Uh, and that's one thing I gotta kinda pat myself on the back on. Like I, I used to three putt on the regular, and now I'm just like, my putting is, I can, I've noticed, I was like, this is massive improvement. With, with playing and whatever I've been doing to kind of get better at, my putting has improved massively. So if I can just figure out how to not hit behind the tree after every second shot, I'm, you know, this game will be great. Yeah, you'd be breaking 80 there regularly, right? Yeah, regularly, exactly, yeah. Okay, well, shall we dive into your dream four ball? Let's do it, let's do it. Who would you like to join you first? Um, it's a person who means a lot to you. Okay, uh, wow, this is a tough one. I'm gonna get, hopefully no one watches this, uh, my boys wise, because I have so many out there. Um, you know what, I'm gonna say a, a really good friend of mine, he's a pro tennis player, uh, nasty golfer. He's, he averages 300 on the reg, um, drive the heck out of the ball. His name is good old Mr. Ryan Harrison. Uh, he's a heck of a tennis player and um, yeah, he's a heck of a golfer. We go out and play quite a bit, so we have a good time out there. So I'll throw him in there. What's his golf game like? Just solid. Uh, he's got to be, yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. He's, he's probably like a five. He's probably around there. Yeah, he's, he's unbelievable. If, it, if his short, if his putting was solid, he'd be a scratch. Like he's just, he's unbelievable. He's one of those guys that also like stands over the ball in a way that you're just like, it looks like the swing is not the, like, the, the, sorry, brother. The swing is not the nicest. <laughs> But he's just, you know, I don't know if it's a tennis game or what, or by the time he's like even coming, like he's, he's on his transition down, his freaking belt buckle is beyond the target open. Like he's yeah. just, he's one of those guys. It's he just like, he stripes right through it, man. He pipes the ball. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A good addition to the, 
the full bowl. Yeah, yeah. So your strengths and weaknesses are flipped then. So he's uh, master of the driver. When we play together anybody. against anybody, we yeah, it's uh, we're tough to beat. Yeah, I was gonna say you'd be a good uh, good yeah. group to, to bet to yeah. put to pair against. So. Yeah. <laughs> so with Ryan being a professional tennis player, is he extremely competitive? Oh boy, this is probably gonna be the end of my friendship. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm coming for you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm the mess out there. I'm the one that I'm, I'm a head case out there when I start playing bad. I've been working on my mental game. Ryan, Ryan is someone that is, uh, you could see, you could see why he's a professional athlete. You know what I mean? Like he just really, if he hits a bad shot, that next shot is, it's like rare that that next shot he, he shanks or messes up. Like his mental game, you can just see the process of his own mental game. You could see him, I've seen him got a, get in it getting upset out there but like it's just it's very different from jr getting upset um he uh yeah there's there's a just there's just just a different mental uh i don't know they they switch something on that's different that i don't have you know Uh, what i will say is i finally got him my cousin's a a hell of a golfer i have a lot of good golf friends in 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 florida and we went out to uh this um was it saint regis when saint pete i forgot uh um Oh my goodness, I wasn't saying this. Was it really? Um, anyways, we went out to a really nice private course in St. Pete, which was just like the fairways were like you can bounce on them. They were so nice. Um, and he had, we got a little drunk the night before. He had one too many tequilas I, I gave him. He was cross eyed. Like he was just not in no shape or way, shape, or form to play golf. And we should have beat them. This guy literally lost us the game. <laughs> he was, I've never seen him get so upset with himself. Like, it was the first time I've ever seen him. Like, I was just like, dude, like, you're literally, you're sweating Don Julio. Like, just, there's a reason why you're not playing well, bro. It was the only time I've seen him. Like, the, the whole mental athlete mentality went to, went to Gaga. Like, it was just like, so that's the one, that's the only time I've seen him. To this day, he's still like, I want to rematch. I'm like, don't drink the night before. Because, like, literally, we lost Lay off the tequila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did not have my back that day, but it was literally the only time I've ever seen him kind of break down. Yeah. Yeah, you, these athletes just have a different, they, they just have something different up there. Yeah. They, they really, really do. Yeah, they really, I mean, the mental game of it is key, but tequila will definitely throw that yeah. out the window very quick. <laughs> yeah. It's a skill in itself, being yeah, able right. to drink and play golf. It, it is. It is, it is. Yeah. Fair enough. The third member of the football is someone you consider a master of their craft. Oof. Um... Master of the craft. You know what? I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with with, with, with with Mr. Gooch. I played with him yesterday, and I could see this guy. I mean, obviously he's on fire right now. You know, he's. But I've, I've I I saw him play before, and like you could see his his game has improved. Im- not that he was bad before, but his game has improved immensely. Like it's just incredible, and he's just yeah. I don't know, man. I've played with a I've played with a few pros now, and he's there was something. There's a humility to this guy that was just, it was rare, you know? Like, he was just like, he felt so authentic out there. He was just like, really, like, as Mel said it yesterday, she's like, he felt like a, had like dad energy in, a, in such a cool way. He just wanted to, like, he was having such a good time with us. And I know, like, they're probably like, these pro ams they're probably like, and it was raining too, and they got to play today. They're probably like, let's go, come on. I don't, <laughs> last thing I want to do is give these darn amateurs lessons, you know? But he was uh, unauthentically, like, just like really, wanting to engage and yeah, he left a like, and Boyd too, like there was just like, there's such an awesome little uh, group out there. Yeah. So yeah, I'll throw him in there. Oh, it's a, I mean, Taylor on fire for sure, three victories this year. Yeah. Uh, he was part of a different team last year that won the team championship and he contributed a great deal to that. So, I mean, still a lot of lo- golf left to play this year, but the guy's definitely made a name for himself this year, especially here at Liv. So yeah, big time. well, part of his game, did you pick up on yesterday that you admired the most that you just wish you had? Oh my, his, I mean, the way he drives the ball is unbelievable. Like, you know, it just looks effortless. The way he drives the ball is unbelievable. But his iron play too, he has a, such a beautiful, his draw, it's just like, it's literally like the most, per, there, it's on a freaking ladder. I'm just like, it's unbelievable. It's literally on a ladder. It's just this perfect little draw. I'm just like, okay, all right. And it just looks like they get through the ball so well. Lee too, man, like Lee, like, He's, you know, a little older now, sorry, but like he, he, his, he doesn't get a full extension, but the way I was watching the videos yesterday, the way they get through the ball, you know, they get their chest through the ball, but like, it's unbelievable. I mean, there's a reason why, you know, these guys obviously have been doing it for years, but it's just a beautiful thing to watch because it looks, it looks effortless, you know, it really is. One thing that I'm going to call out that, <clears throat> that I thought was interesting with, with Taylor and experience with programs is he had this little kind of 
betting game that he was doing throughout the front nine. And this gives oh, gives both you and I a little opportunity yeah. to do a little humble brag in this yeah, thing. But yeah, I know. So he, he was it was pretty cool. It was like after every hole they'd have someone pick a ridiculous putt with like a make percentage chance of like less than five percent. I mean yeah. you're talking like sixty footers that went on winding triple breakers or whatever. And they had you put one that was like up a hill and came back down yeah, yeah. and he drains it. Yeah. <laughs> like how far out was that putt? That was so cool, man. I don't it was one of those things like I, I gotta say, I was like obviously if I would have gone first, that would have never happened. Because I would I would have never like the the greens in this place are unbelievable. Like it's like I can't tell you how many times I would step on the greens yesterday, look at them, and I do the little, you know, Adam Scott step thing. It really has helped me with my putting thing, but I would step on it and I'll be like, This is flat like maybe one degree of slope, maybe. And then you put it and it ends up like down the hill and you're like, it's, it's, there's very tough greens, you know? Um, so yeah, I got I mean, again, like, it's so funny cause he, he reposted it, he put it up, whatever. And I'm just like, if I post this, I'm going to get so much trash from my friends. Cause they're going to be like, yeah, okay, buddy. Like you're like, you're, you're that good. Like Taylor, you beat Taylor. Like you took a hundred dollars from this guy, but the video was there. I ended up making it. But again, I was like third or fourth. And I kept seeing how it was breaking. So I was like, all right, I just picked a line and it happened to go in. It was so cool. <laughs> yeah. That was a cool moment. It was, it, it was just a cool thing they did because normally he said that they make like no, none of these pots. And then I ended up making one yeah, and then uh, his caddy made another yeah. one. So it was pretty cool. They had three of them. Yeah. Everyone was exchanging some money, having a good time. And then, uh, yeah, it was fun. It, it lightened up the moment. It lightened up each hole. Like, yeah, again, the camaraderie of it all. Like it just lightened up the energy going into the next hole. Uh, the guys got to talk some trash and like it was it was it was a lot of fun you know it was cool because it's like this is kind of stuff you do with your boys but you're playing with these amazing pros and coaches and stuff and like it literally felt like you knew these people for years so it yeah was, it was awesome. well so Taylor will bring that to the table in the four ball then so good addition yeah, for yeah. sure it's looking pretty talented so far yeah. all right so Taylor obviously having this betting game throughout the, the course of the nine holes you played with him which was fun he has the upper hand, obviously. He's a pro golfer, won three times this year. But I did win the putt. But yeah. You did win one the putt. He actually didn't make any of them. That's right. He didn't make any. So, Taylor, and still coming after you for that 100 bucks, actually. But what would you, if you wanted the roles reversed and you got to pick a game to play with Taylor, what would you challenge him on? Oof. Um, I, heard he, I heard he can ball, but I, I'd take, I, I'll take my shot any day over. over yeah, I, I'd say a little basketball. Okay. i get him on the court. Yeah, do a little 21, a little one-on-one, whatever he wants. Let's go. Bring it, baby. Now, I will say, he was the first one to pay out, too. Like, you know, what's like, your uh, basketball game like? What's, what's your uh, go-to? I, mean, I haven't played in a long time, man. I've been so scared to get out there. But my, my shot is, you know, my shot is, is money. Yeah, I got, a, I got a good shot. Yeah. All right, we'll see you and Taylor hoop it up hopefully soon. Let's so. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> the fourth member is a celebrity guest you'd like to invite. Celebrity. Um... I've never met this guy, but he is, I mean, first off, his golf game is ridiculous, you know, but he's just, he just has this kind of energy that is, it seems like it'd just be palpable. Like, it's just like, it's, it's contagious. And he's so, he's, I mean, in my opinion, sorry, Reggie, the best three point shooter ever. Uh, uh, Steph freaking Curry, man. What is it that this guy can't do? He's unbelievable, like unbelievable. Um, that, sen- that American Century Tour uh, or whatever thing he just did. Drained a hole in one and then goes and wins it, you know, with the last play. Like, he's just – and I know Marty Fish because Ryan knows Marty really well. I've seen Marty play before. And Marty's – I mean, Marty can play. Yeah. He's a heck of a golfer. And this guy goes off and wins. Like, it's just – he's – yeah, so Steph Curry, I have to put him in there. I love to meet that guy at some point. There really is nothing that he can't do for sure. Unbelievable. We were talking about that tournament actually just recently, and it's like all the star athletes that are out there that yeah. play golf, the who's who of – of athletes in this world just die to play in that event. Yeah. I mean, it's like the, the place they want to go. And yeah. then for him to go out and win it, you know, and then make an ace, yeah, like, yeah. it's pretty incredible. It's so, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's this is energy about it, too. Like, he just has this kind of energy where he's just like, he's super competitive, but he's just also like really like, there's a likeness to the way he does it. You know what I mean? That like, it's not like, because some of these guys can be very, uh, I don't want to say aggressive, but it's like off-putting in a sense. Like they, they get so competitive. It's just like kind of, that's a bit of a turnoff where it's, Steph just makes it like fun, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, a nice addition. I mean, you've got two professional, three professional athletes yeah, yeah. and yourself. I mean, that's... I don't, I, I, I'm pretty sure they would knock me off the list, but <laughs> this is my turn, so I get to put myself in there. <laughs> if you could steal one of Steph Curry's talents, whether it's 
golf or basketball or anything, right. what would you want to steal off of him? All of it. <laughs> <laughs> his mental game, his, his, his freaking like perfect release. Um, wow. Uh, I, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, that's a no brainer. I steal his, his, yeah, his, his shooting ability. He is like, he's, you know, it's unbelievable. And I've also watched a lot of footage on him on how it's improved because he wasn't always that, he, you know, he could always, he could shoot from very early age, but like he, you could see like how much work he's put into it. You know, I mean, he's just, it's just ridiculous the stuff he can do now, but it's, it's also, you could tell like how hard he's worked at it. I would take a shot any day, yeah. So the confidence he has in it too, where he just dribbles up the court and throws up like a 40 foot three point shot and it's it, away after it leaves his hand. Like, it's just like, it's, it's just like, he's, he plays, he's playing a video game out there. It's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, and then for him being able to do that, his NBA contract is pretty uh, extensive. So that'd come hand in hand. I'm pretty sure that's why you'd want to select that. So yeah. <laughs> you guys are doing pretty good. Yeah, he's doing all right for himself. <laughs> Everything he touches turns yeah. to gold for crying out loud. Yeah. Golf game's not too bad, too, but definitely three-point shot. Yeah, yeah three-point shot. Yeah, I, I, there's a couple other golfers I'd probably pick. Yeah. If you could be a professional sportsman, okay. would you pick golf or basketball? Ooh. If you would have asked me this maybe 10 years ago, I probably would have said basketball, but now 100% I would say golf. I mean, these guys have the life. Like, you, you travel all around the world to be able to play a game that's, like, it's unbelievable. Yeah, like, I, I, yeah, golf, 100%. I'd be a professional golfer in a heartbeat, yeah. It is lots of travel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, so is any, any other sport. It's like, they, like, you have to endure a lot of, it's really tough on, I would imagine, on, you know, on, par on being a parent and, and having a relationship and balancing everything. It's like, I can only imagine, like, you know, because for us, we have to, we do a lot of traveling too. We spend six, seven months out of the year shooting somewhere that's normally not our home base. Um, and it puts a big strain on stuff, you know, I've seen so many, of the, I don't have any kids yet, but I've, seen, I've worked with so many incredible actors that have to like, you know, we do 17 hour days sometimes on the regular and they have to freaking hop on a plane after shooting, you know, 17 hours on, you know, on a Friday to go see their kid for a day and a half to come back on Sunday. It's just like, it's, it's a lot of work. So like, I can, I can kind of relate to that in a sense, you know, and it's, yeah, the traveling part is, is, is difficult. I would imagine in any professional sport, but you can see the highs being the best. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, golf, yeah. Well, longevity too. You've got people that are, you know, in their early 60s still playing on like the senior tours and stuff and, and yeah. playing at a high level and Take still enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can go for a while, whereas basketball, unfortunately, that's not the, yeah. 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 Well, it's not too late for you, JR. There's still. What, for golf? Yeah. Don't, I mean, don't tell me twice. <laughs> nah, shit, I got a long way to go. I got a long way. I also have terrible mental games. So I got I got a lot of work to do, but I have I have imp I have definitely improved. But no, nah, I'll be playing this for the rest of my life. I can tell you that much. Yeah, this obsession is not going anywhere anytime soon. Where would you like to play your dream four ball? Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, wow, anywhere. Uh, uh, I, yeah, I haven't done a lot of the great ones yet. Like I haven't even played Pebble. Um, what's the one next to Pebble? Uh, yeah, Spyglass, Cyprus. You got Cyprus. They say Cyprus is unbelievable. They also say Sabonic is unbelievable. I've done Liberty. Liberty. Liberty is pretty cool, but not like I don't know. I think yeah, maybe like I guess Cyprus. Something by the water that would be really like you know. On a nice warm day for you. On a nice warm day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, because yeah, St Andrews and all that stuff. Like the links over there with the wind and the cold. Like no, 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 no. I'm good. <laughs> no, <laughs> I stand no chance. <laughs> I think they'd appreciate that too. So. Yeah. <laughs> So just to round it up, you've got yourself, yep. your good friend, who's a professional tennis player, yeah, Ryan, Ryan Harrison, Harrison. Yep. Taylor Gooch, yeah, that's right. and Steph Curry. Steph Curry, yeah. That's a pretty good four ball, yeah. solid. Yeah. I have a gallery following you guys probably, that's yeah, a pretty yeah. good crew. Probably following them, but yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so kind of mixing worlds here with yeah. uh, acting, producing, and golf. If you could step in and be a character in any uh, active for past golf movie, who would it be and why? I mean, that's a good one. Uh, there's been a couple great ones out there um, over the time. Man, I would have to say Caddyshack. Okay. I mean, just legends, like legends. Like those guys are just like the best of the best when it comes to comedy, you know, just to be able to work with them doing a movie 
I mean, it would be a dream, you know, to be able to do something like a, like a proper production of, of golf. And it's also like, I mean, Happy Gilmore was great. There's a couple of great ones. Caddyshack takes, takes, takes the cake on that one. You get that comedy role you were just talking about. So, yeah, right. that, I mean, that'd be perfect. Those, those beast, yeah, for sure. That's definitely a movie that stands the test of time. Oh. So, yeah. it's pretty funny. And then, as far as producing a movie, thinking about any active golfers that are out there on the, the pro circuit, who would be someone that you would want to maybe produce a, a feature about and why? Um, wow. I mean, I'm going to get cliche with it, I guess. Tiger, you know, I'm just, it's just uh, what that man has done is just, it's unbelievable, you know, like his, his, uh, yeah. I mean, it speaks for itself. Like, there's so there would be so much, so much to put in, in into that film that would like tug at hearts. I feel like and like show like, you know, I mean, there's never been anyone like him. I don't think there ever will be. He is just, you know, it's Tiger Woods. I, yeah, you can make like I think I feel like you can make a really really uh, great script around you know what he's been through and what he's accomplished and. Yeah. No. I was, I will admit it, I'm a grown man, but I was, I sat there and cried when he won the Masters in yeah. 2019. I was yeah. just like, so into it, you know, and it was like, Softy. we had plans, <laughs> we had plans that day. And I was like, no, we're not doing anything. I'm watching this, this yeah. tournament, like not going to miss a shot. And I think a lot of people out there felt the same way, you know, so yeah. you can make a movie just about that, yeah. that weekend, right? It was unbelievable what he was able to do after everything he's been through and the injuries and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's, he's the best. So. You cried, Travis. I cried, you know, just oh, like oh, just oh, just like Bubba. I'm a grown man. I got chest hair in my chest, and I cry. <laughs> Good form of therapy, you know. Well, hey, we were excited to have you out here, and we're happy that you had a great experience in the pro am and get to experience, you know, live for itself in person. So, uh, and look forward to the next acting gig whenever the the strike gets lifted. Whether you know, we might see you out on the professional golf tour one day I mean, here it's soon. It's definitely helped my handicap, yeah. uh, but no, we're all very much ready to get back to work. You know, I think this is something that needed to happen. Um, it was time, but you know, it's, it's a, you know, with all that being said, it's a difficult time for everybody. We were very fortunate enough to come off a five-year job. Um, so I've been able to kind of bunker down and work on some stuff that I've been working on production-wise, you know, and, and be okay. But, you know, I have friends, you know, it's, it's a serious time right now. I have friends of mine that are even thinking about going back and getting the damn waitering job because they got to feed their families. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully they're able to figure this out sooner rather than later. It may take all year. Uh, but, yeah, I've been praying that, you know, it all kind of, they, you know, it, this needed to happen because um, there's a lot of unfairity that's happening that's, that's going on right now. Um, so hopefully, uh, yeah, we're able to figure that out. And in the meantime, I'll continue dropping my handicap. So you'll be working on those drives. Yeah, no, I'm very fortunate that I'm able to do that in real talk. But yeah, yeah, no, it's great to have you. And if you haven't seen Manifest or, or Power, yeah. go watch our guy here, Jr. And those shows, they're great, and uh, you'll love them. So thank, thank you guys. This has been such an awesome experience. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Yeah. yeah.